Look, a roller dyno, we've got strapping technique, we've got the sidewall height and compound, we've got the overall wheel size, and then three things can add up to, like I said, a, a 50 horsepower, a 200 horsepower, and hundreds at 800 horsepower, for example. So, so the hub dyno completely eliminates them variables, whatever, so there's no fixed number you're ever going to be able to apply from it. And for a comparable point of view on a roller dyno, all the, car, all the user has to do is, is try and make sure the car is as the same as it was when tested last time. Now, use the same, as long as they stra strap it down the same, the same ramp rates use, the same wheels and tyres, it's a completely repeatable product and, and it's a tuning tool in that regards, whatever. But the hub dyno eliminates three huge variables that you don't have to worry about, worry about anymore. My observation is that something that's almost spoken about daily on internet like Facebook and that sort of stuff there's obviously lots of okay. experts out there who have an opinion on it because they've tested their car and done it back to, that's the number they come up with whatever which doesn't mean that trends first to every conceivable car so there's I have lots of data because we, we approximately test two hub dynos per week at our factory which we, we sell so our test car from a roller dyno it's just a VE Commodore Ute you know, it picks up you know between 30 to 40 horsepower from just basically pulling the wheels and tyres off and putting it on a hub dyno. It goes from 360 to about 400 horsepower on a hub dyno. So some of that is the simple inertial change where the average wheel and tyre consumes you know, 15 to 20 horsepower depending on the ramp rate that you're actually accelerating at. So that's where people who know when they go from a 17 to a 20 inch wheel, the car feels slower on the road because the bigger wheels are absorbing the power, it's not getting to the road. Well, the same thing happens on a roller dyno, the same thing happens on a, on a hub dyno, you're removing that, that variable. But, so, so mathematically, look, there's 30-ish horsepower per, per set of wheels and tyres, and then the extra power you're picking up is the tyre loss you're now eliminating. So the less power you've got, the less tyre loss you've got from a slip on the tyre. And as you start making more and more power, it just grows exponentially, the, the power loss, because obviously you're getting to the point where people can't hold it on a roller dyno. So there, I've had customers who've done straight back-to-backs where they've gone from, you know, on his roller dyno, the best he got in two-wheel drive on an R35 to like eight, 880 horsepower or something, put his hub dyno in 1100 straight away. You know, that's because, not, but then, then you can start tuning with it. And then by the end of the day, he was at 1800 horsepower, you know, because then he had no limitation anymore. So, but it's no, and like I said, the number I said before, I've had plenty of guys with XR6 stuff pick up 100 kilowatts, just taking the wheels and that's just tire loss. But they're like, so people don't realize that there's, while they may think that a, a, a roller and a rubber tire work perfectly, they don't. They slip there all the time, you know, no matter how hard you pull down. Because as you pull down the tire on the, on the on the dyno, you're compressing the tire, so the rolling radius is changing. So, so where when the tires are just normal height, you've just changed the rolling radius of the tire by an inch, for example. So, 6,000 RPM in top gear is not the same road speed you'd get on the road. You just reduce what it gets to. So, the way a dyno works, it's it's roller RPM and roller torque gives you the roller power. So, if you pull the roller speed back, then you're not then that's one of the factors which affects the power reading as well. So that's why also that, that variable is taken out of the equation as well on a hub dyno. Well, the thing is with the way a wheel and tyre works, the reason why you see the difference is, is a thing called inertia, which is rotational mass of, of a round object. So if you have a 17 inch wheel versus a 20 inch wheel, there's more mass towards the outside so that has more inertial loss. Once again, there's no exact number for it. Typically what you see, you'd, you'd have to say an average number would be 15 horsepower per wheel. If you had a car that had big 20s on it, then you're probably gonna immediately see a bigger change. But then that number goes up with power increases.
there's on a roller dyno, the software's always assuming you're turning the four roller. So if you come off the roller and you're not spinning the rear roller, roller dyno, you might get 20 or 30 horsepower for free because depending on the ramp rate, that's assumed. So that's why the roller dynos get bagged for that particular thing, but that's what happens in the real world. So, so that's another variable taken out. So that's why some people say, I've done a back-to-back -back test. I, I saw this, I only saw 10, 10 horsepower difference. You know, so you can't hold a thousand horsepower car on a roller dyno touching four rollers. You, you have to let it climb. So that's why, but that's, some, that's why some people get confused about the differences between a hub and a, and, a, and, a, and a roller. There's other factors which can come into play on a roller dyno, why you get a, a, a a higher than normal reading. Well, it sort of all boils down to the strength of the sidewall and, and the height of the sidewall. Like, you see it, you go, the guys who know what they're doing at the summer nets when we used to have roller dynos there, they'd have a 20 inch reel with a little 35 ratio tire on it, nice and hard, and that's a nice hard, so you're getting closer to a solid compound which then can transfer that, when you pull down, you can transfer that to the roller. If you've got a big balloon sidewall like a drag radial, it's soft, so no matter how far you pull down on the car, the, the sidewall is gonna absorb some of that power. And, and what you see from a testing perspective is, you put a street car on it, you do a dyno run, you'll go to 200 kilometers per hour. You put the, the drag radial on it, and then, you, and then you go to 160 kilometers per hour. And the power difference is, in that same percentage, whatever, because if you lose if you lose road speed, then you leave you lose. It's one of the it's one of the, it's torque and speed equal power. So if you leave if, you, if one of the speeds down, then so is the the power number is going to be down as well. Look, oh, I can only go from back to back tests where we've had, you know, uh, a car that made 700 horsepower. We tested once upon a time, and I'd gone back to the customer's premises a year later to take his dyno and his car to a dyno comp, and in that period of time, he's changed his wheels and tires and his 640 horsepower it made, whatever. And all he's done is went from a, uh, for example, he had a, actually like a cheap Chinese tire on it, and he put a Pirelli tire on I don't know what compound it was, but he lost 60 horsepower out of 700 just changing the wheels and tires, you know, so, so that the, the compound certainly affects the, the, the number you get on a roller dyno. The, the ramp rate is just purely there to, on a roller dyno, it's basically the higher horsepower you make, the faster ramp rate you use to, to minimize the tire loss. So you can, you can double the ramp rate and make similar power because what we don't account for in our software is the inertia of the wheel and tire. We account, we account for all the rotational rollers and retarder in the dyno, but we don't account for the rotational mass of the wheel and tire. So when you accelerate something faster, there's more inertial losses. So theoretically, when you go to a faster ramp rate, you should have a lower number. But when you go to a faster ramp rate, you might minimize your tire losses. On the, if you ramp a car which has got lots of power slowly, there's more tire losses because the dyno says, you're only accelerating this fast, but the car's trying to accelerate faster. So there's more losses there on the roller. So, but, and the fast ramp rate typically just can make a turbo car a bit more laggy in that regards, whatever. But other than that, look, people get the strapping technique. If new dyno owners can be a little bit um, overzealous thinking they have to strap cars down it's not so much they're using this, they're just using the straps wrong. They sort of, they pull the car down and pull it sort of off the front roller. So they, so they see video where a guy in America straps the car down with straps in four corners so the car can't move. And that's for that style of dyno where we have what's called a roller, a cradle dyno where the, the wheels are sitting in four rollers. And that dyno, the way you'd strap a car and that is completely different to another style of so, so the way that works, if you stop the car from being able to move forward onto the front roller, then you induce wheel spin. So the, the trick there is to, sure, we can have straps under the car pulling down as hard as you want, but you don't have your, what's called your restraint straps stopping the car from moving. So, and that can, and with strapping the high horsepower cars, you've got way more to gain by pulling down tight than not pulling down tight. But if you go stupid on a 200 horsepower car, you could pull 50 horsepower out if you wanted to, whatever. It's like when we first built the, the two roller dynos we took to the summer nets where we had like a big air ram set, set up on the back of it. We, I took our test car and look, it, it would normally make 360 and 370 horsepower. Now I maxed out the, the pull down system on that and I got it down to 310 horsepower because it was just the tire was just so hard pulled into the tire. And then if I took that system completely off 
and took all the straps off and put my chocks four inches in front of me, I got close to 390, 400 horsepower, you know, so that difference, whatever, you know, so, so that's the sort of range you can make from one stupid extreme to another yeah, extreme. At the end of the day, there's no, there's no factor you can ever apply to it. If a guy wants to go out and put his car in a roller dyno, a hub dyno, if that different works for his car, once again, as long as he never changes the wheels and tires on his car, then it works for him. But it's no, you can't use a number someone finds on one dyno and apply it to another car. It just, you just, it can, cannot be done.